Hey what's going on guys, my name is CarQ and today we'll be going over 5 Ana tips that I think are the most helpful in improving your Ana play. Without wasting any time, let's get started. The first tip I have for Ana is learning how to land more offensive biotic grenades. Now I'm sure you already know that an offensive bionade is one of the best non-ultimate abilities in the game. Well the tip here really isn't about its importance, but rather on how to create more offensive nade opportunities by using the map environment. So in this example here, we wait for Reinhardt and his team to move forward, but instead of throwing a floor nade, which many players often default to, this is where we look to use the surrounding environment, in this case the bridge right above him, so the nade splash hits Brian and his teammates behind him. So with that being said, I encourage you to assess where enemies are grouped in all phases of the game and be open to the idea of throwing nades on walls, ceilings, or poles if the situation looks optimal. The second tip is a continuation of the first one. We're still going to be talking about the biotic grenade, only this time it's going to be about throwing nades during the beginning of the game and mid-game for a little boost in ultimate charge and creating a little advantage. What this tip does is help Ana earn a little bit of ultimate charge like I just said, depending on the number of enemies hit, and in some cases get a kill in what I call downtime, or times where you're most likely not going to need the cooldown for the next 10 seconds. In this example here on King's Row, I know the exact position and crosshair placement to throw a nade at the beginning of the game in order to hit enemies out of their spawn. I know it takes enemies about 10 seconds to walk to the choke, so I likely wouldn't have needed the cooldown if I didn't choose to throw it. But in this case I did, and it actually secured a kill because it was comboed with my Symmetra Sentry Nest. Now more importantly, there are angles where you can toss grenades in the middle of matches right out of the base to the point, like here on Nepal. Finding out where you can throw grenades in order to land them in high traffic areas can be very beneficial, especially on King of the Hill maps, because oftentimes your team may still be contesting the point as you respawn. So with this example I showed on Nepal, you can potentially hit your teammate and the enemies, netting you a small advantage. The third Ana tip is pertaining to her quick scope mechanic. Now an unscoped shot from Ana is a fast traveling projectile whereas her scope is an instantaneous hit scan shot denoted by the long trail you see here. Both methods have their pros and cons. The nature of unscoped projectile shots means that there is a small delay from your gun to the target. Unless you are an absolute projectile god and can predict the high mobility targets like NG and Tracer Blinks, this will never compare to the instantaneous accuracy of a scoped hit scan shot but staying scope limits your field of vision and hinders your movement speed considerably. Just look how sluggish I am as I try to walk forward scoped compared to unscoped. There's a common misnomer that goes something along the lines of always staying unscoped because you keep your movement speed and it doesn't limit your line of sight and will not reveal your location because it doesn't leave a bullet trail. I mean, this is somewhat true to a certain extent, but I'm gonna have to disagree with always staying unscoped. Now this is where quick scoping comes to play. It's like the happy medium between scoped and unscoped shots. So quick scope shots are hit scan, but it allows you to keep your movement momentum if you combine it with the jump and only momentarily obscures your field of vision in a blink of an eye, or sometimes none at all if timed perfectly. To perform this, you will need to have good crosshair placement over your target and shoot the moment you begin the scope animation. It takes some practice and getting used to, but all great Ana players have already mastered this technique, so if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to get into the practice range and start getting the muscle memory down. Just note that your rate of fire is slightly slower if you make continuous quick scope shots versus continuous unscoped or scoped shots, but this is the trade-off and frankly I think it's worth it. Remember to find that balance of staying unscoped and close to mid-range, hard scoping at long range if you're in a safe position, and quick scoping if you need to reposition but want to land accurate shots in between. The fourth tip I want to go over is sleep dart timing. Now I'm sure everyone already knows what sleep dart does, but I want to talk about when to use the dart proactively and when to use it reactively. The easiest way to describe how I use sleep dart is to be proactive as often as you can because hitting a dart on anyone close to mid range of your position usually secures a kill. However, after about two skirmishes between both teams, this is where I start thinking reactively about enemy ultimates and what sleep dart can nullify. This is where I often begin holding on to dart in order to cancel high value enemy ultimates. For example, if I notice the enemy team has a Farah, I give her about a minute of game time before I start thinking that she may be holding on to Rocket Barrage. In these cases, I wait patiently in order to react to the sound cue and land this crucial ability on her as she's just a sitting duck during its channel. In many cases, my sleep dart here gets amazing value because I either cancel one or sometimes two ultimates if the enemy Farah gets nanoed as well. I actually canceled three ultimates here. Talk about value! The last Ana tip I have is rather general, but it may be the most important piece of advice. Besides working on your raw aiming mechanics and maximizing your APM in terms of healing and DPS, I think the biggest thing an Ana player can do to really improve themselves is to work on their positioning. As Ana, you are the best burst healer in the game with the most versatile kit. What good are these abilities if you're always being caught out? Who are you healing if you're always dead? You are a core piece of every team fight. If you die early, your team is at a massive disadvantage because they will no longer be healed and the enemies are free of the threat of an anti-healing nade or having a sleep dart cancel a big ability. 
Basically, the tip here is to be mindful of where you're positioned in fights. Play at angles where you're protected, either by environmental objects such as walls, poles, and statues, or behind your tanks and with your teammates. Play in positions where you can have a good healing angle while being relatively safe. Remember that I can't hold your hand here and I can't tell you exactly where to position. A good position can quickly turn into a bad one within a few seconds as teammates and enemies are always on the move. This game isn't static, so try to think for yourself, be autonomous, and do your best to stay alive. Anyways, that's all I've got for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little late as Ana looks like she's gonna be hit with some big nerfs, but these tips will still apply if you choose to play her despite the changes.